Facebook jail. Guys, we've had three people so far in the last like 24 or so hours, like tell me that they are in something called Facebook jail. I want to show you one, why um, Facebook jail happens and two, something that you can do to prevent it. Um, these are things like two factor identification, following the terms of service, and just realizing where the, 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 the weak spots can be in your profile and in your business so that you can keep out of Facebook jail because it is super frustrating to be, to be where your, your business depends on Facebook and for you not to be able to comment, not to be able to share, not to be able to engage in groups. And um, I don't want you to be frustrated like that. So head with me into the account here. I'm gonna pull up my page so you can follow along. Just so you know, I am streaming right now both through Facebook and through um, YouTube. So if you're uh, if you're wondering where, where to watch me, you are probably watching in one of those two places. So here we are, this is my personal profile. Now I wanna show you first what it looks like when you're in jail. Ah, the, the message went away. Here, just a second guys, let me see if I can pull it back up. Um, pull it back up here and then I'll show you guys the message here. I wanna show you what it looks like if you've gotten into Facebook jail. You're gonna get a message similar to this. Let me pull it back up here. Whoop. There we go. I'm pulling it up right now so you can see what it looks like. And it looks like this. If you are in Facebook jail, you probably got some a notice similar to this that says we've detected suspicious activity. Your account's going to be limited for an unknown period of time. That's what happens when you're in Facebook jail. So you get where your account is limited because you are not able to comment, you're not able to share, you're not able to do. And just so you guys know, we've had this happen with three people in the last 24 hours. So three people, two people last night, one person this morning, and their stories are super, super similar. So because three people have contacted me, I know there's probably more people that either have messaged my team and I haven't gotten emails yet or are in our group, but um, I want this message to go out to help all of you so you don't keep having these problems. So what am I showing you right now? This is my personal profile. I'm showing you my personal profile for a few reasons. I want us to go in and see our activity log. So anytime that we are having um, a moment where we are getting our, our, our wrist slapped and we're having like, oh, you're posting some suspicious activity, I always wanna go here and actually check, am I posting something suspicious or weird or off? I can go in and I can see the posts that I've engaged in and I'll know if I um, didn't engage on any of these. If I didn't like this post, then that's a sign to me. Somebody else is in my account and they need to get the heck out of there. Okay, so this is where I would first go to check if I get a you, you're, you've got um, been hacked type of report. Next up, we're gonna go over into our settings. So this is our settings and inside of our settings, I always wanna make sure we go with our security and login. We always wanna make sure that we have these settings turned on. I want you to have two-factor identification. Why? That means somebody else can't hack into your account as easily. I want you to view your authorized logins. This tells you when someone's logged into your account and where they were located. So I know this device on Chrome access the account. Well, guess what? I use Chrome from my house right now. We're good. So I want you to go in here and check to see your login. Another one would be to get um, alerts if there's an unrecognized login and make sure you have three to five friends that can get you out if you happen to be locked up. So locked into your account. Another one in here, you can see if you can create separate passwords for apps. So that way, you can, your app is not using your Facebook login. Right here, guys, if you don't have this one, um, because the reports that we're getting are all people who um, have used third-party apps, um, this would be a section where I would check and make sure that I would change up your passwords on your apps. So that way your apps are always using fresh passwords and they're not logging into Facebook on your behalf. Um, okay, so now we've got that. Next, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna see our apps and websites. So you can see these are apps that I use to log into Facebook. Any time that I have like a phishing report where somebody says, oh, you or your page might be seen as phishing, I go in here and I delete all of these puppies. I delete them all. Because the reality is I don't want for me to have um, a medium, it's a newspaper, news thing. I don't want them though logging in to Facebook 
as me and commenting and posting. Now, when I signed up for the app, it said they wouldn't, but that said, I have seen apps get corrupted and an app could get hacked. If Medium gets hacked, now I'm at risk. So I just go in through here and I'll delete the a bunch of these. I'm going to delete the ones that I'm not actively using right now. Delete those, remove, and voila, I'm going to delete, aha, all the app photos, videos, and posts that they have published on our app. You also want to do that. Hit remove and they're done. Those are gone. You want to make sure that you have those cleaned up. That helps you have less risk for being um, hacked. So we've talked to you so far. We've talked to you about Facebook jail and how we've had three people that have been reported in the last oh, 24 hours, I think. Uh, maybe it's been four people. I think it's been four people. In the last 24 hours. And Facebook jail, all four of them were on, had third party schedulers. What I mean by that is they used Edgar, they used Co-Scheduler, they used Buffer on their profiles and on their pages to post for them. And that's kind of a red alert. Now, technically, it's not like against the terms in the sense Facebook has given like a blank check to them, but know that this is Facebook's terms of service. And Facebook right through here says that we're not to share our password or give access to someone on our Facebook account or transfer our account to someone else without um, Facebook's permission. So right here, we're telling Facebook that we're always going to be truthful about who we are. Sometimes the apps get that line fuzzy. If they don't update their APIs, it starts to look like somebody else is logging into your account and acting as you. So that's one right here. And then it also says that we will not access or collect data from our process using automated means. Means, what does that mean? So if the app um, you're using um, just another a scheduling app out there, I'm not gonna call out any apps specifically, but you're using that app, and let's say Facebook changes its rules about what the app is allowed to do. Well, now you're in violation if you've had that app changing and collecting data when it wasn't supposed to. So just be aware of the Facebook terms of service so that that way you can make wise choices. And for me, that means I, I only work within the creator studio. So I go into my Moolah Marketer page. Here's my page. It's one of my pages, guys. I've got tons. I go up here to Creator Studio. That is where I schedule my post. And I'll schedule from Facebook and the Instagram. I can do all of that right here. So I can see here I'm scheduling my Instagram. Here I'm scheduling my Facebook. I can do that right from within Facebook itself. For me, it's not worth the risk of bringing on a third-party app. Um, we, these apps can basically put your account at risk. And I don't want that to happen for you. So, um, okay. Um, so just review jail is when you get those notices that say you're restricted from behavior for until a certain time. That's what I call jail. There's jail, like, um, where you're not able to do a certain task. So that could be like inviting people to like your page. That's more like a timeout in my mind mentally. And then there's actual Jared, where you're a profile, you can't do anything but see things on Facebook. You can't comment, you can't do a single thing. That's really, really hard jail. Um, so those are the two different types of jails. Two-factor identification, I showed you where to turn that on, how every single one of you needs to have that. I showed you how to see your activity logs so you can see who's, um, what's being posted so you can tell if there's something that's really weird and off, off, not off brand, not supposed to be there. You'll see if that's there. I showed you how to see what apps you have connected to your page um, in your profile and how to remove those. You can also go into your business manager and remove your apps from business manager as well. And I showed you the terms of service, which basically means you're responsible for what apps do. And for me, I'm really hesitant to allow apps access to my page for that reason. So I'm pretty sure that the, the three, four people that have reached out to me, um, because they all in the past, have used schedulers, like in the recent past, we're using schedulers. My guess is it was a scheduler that flagged the system because that's the same similarity that they all had in common. Um, but yes, so I'm gonna pull up some questions here from you guys. If you're listening right now on YouTube, heads up, I get the questions in real time from Facebook. So head over to our Facebook page, Mula Marketer. I am live in both places right now. Um, the third party app is for two years, I don't know why I'm in jail. Well, here's the thing, Ashley, apps can get hacked and apps change their terms and Facebook changes its terms. So even if you've been using an app for years, that doesn't mean that app is always safe. 
what apps were they using? They were using co-schedulers, uh, schedulers. So um, those are things I said co-scheduler, but that there were there were three different brands. So I'm not assuming it's one. So the ones that came to me were Edgar, Buffer, and co-scheduler. But guys, the fact that they're all using this makes me think Facebook made an API change, and the schedulers did not find out about the change or um, whatever it is. I would be very careful though to use a third-party app to ever post on your behalf. Because remember, I showed you the terms and I showed you what they were saying, and I also know um, the issues that we've been having. So, um, Linda says she's been in Facebook jail for posting too fast across multiple groups. That is definitely one of the other reasons why you can get in trouble. If you say the same phrase multiple times, if you um, tag too many people, if you post into many groups at the same time, if you say the same phrase even in different groups, you post the same link multiple places. Um, so you go put it on a page and then a group and then this. So those are all things that can flag the system. Um, I use LastPass to log in. I never use my Facebook login. Well, if last, just be careful. Just be careful. Good morning, bestie. I love you back. I hope you're having a great day. Um, girl, you're smart. I love you too, April. You're rocking. Um, Len Lene says she cannot use um, Instagram from Creator Studio yet in Den Denmark. Lene, I hope it's coming your way soon because it is freaking amazing. You're going to love it when it gets there. Um, yes. Somebody just tagged somebody else who said that they that this would be helpful for them if they're um, if their accounts having some issues, just to review again, we covered jail, how to know if you're in jail. Um, we covered apps, how to find the apps that are connected to your, your profile and how to remove them. We covered two factor identification and, um, login alerts and why you need them set up on your page. We talked about your activity log, how to find what people, um, what you've posted in the past to see if there's like hackers on your system. Sometimes guys, hackers will block you from seeing your own posts. So you can go into your activity log and that's another place you can see in case you've been blocked from seeing it in the feed. We also showed you the terms of service. Okay, guys, this has been fun. I We just had a question from Gail. Now this question, I love this question. She says, um, this is not about jail, but how do I get um, leverage on a new page when I have no money for ads? I have a cl client with a possible 100 Facebook people and 100 Instagram accounts. So here's the deal, Gail. We actually have a challenge going on right now. It is like one of my favorite challenges of all time, and it is 100 perfect people. Let me just type it in, guys. We have 100 perfect people running right now. And what this challenge does right here is we help you with no ads, get attention. Now, if your client has 100 Facebook accounts, like 100 ad accounts they're running a, a post to, this, they're past the stage where they need 100 perfect people, right? But the strategies that you'll learn in that on how to create conversations with your customers are the same strategies that you can use to explode a Facebook account organically and without ads. Now, we primarily in 100 Perfect People focus on personal profile and interest groups. And so there's some tags that we use in, in 100 Perfect People that don't, oh, they're not all my page hacks. My page hacks are in my program called Moolah, but this one right here will tell you how to begin collecting people to you. Um, yeah, and nurturing your starting audience. So I love it, love it, love it. Hopefully it'll help you as you're um, taking your brands to the next level. Um, I can't use Creator Studio for posting Instagram yet either, and I'm in the US. Michelle, it should be rolled out by now. So if you can't use Creator Studio yet, I want you to go to the page on Facebook. It's called facebook.com backslash Creator Studio. Let me get back in here. It's Facebook, gonna type it in a banner here. Facebook backslash Creator Studio. And I believe when you type into that, it will give you access to Creator Studio. So just go to facebook.com Creator Studio and you should be able to get access to that. Okay, Gail says, cool, cool. Okay, it's not a group though. You, Gail, you can grow with pages, profiles, and groups with the very similar types of content. What I mean by that is in 100 Perfect People, I'm gonna show you how to use your profile and your group. But the same content, the same tactics, that we use with profiles and groups, we also use with pages. 
And then in my main program, I teach you with pages. So um, I, it, it's like I teach profile and groups and then pages as my main course. So um, we don't have the main course open yet, but the tactics that you'll learn in 100 Perfect People do apply to a group, do apply to a page, do apply to um, even multiple going across multiple pages. Okay, guys, this has been fun. It's been a crazy 15 minutes. I am going to be live later on today talking about another Rachel rant. So I've, I'm doing one every single day inside of our Facebook group. So if you're not in our Grow Your Audience group, come check it out. Love you guys. And got one more question from Casey who said, I uploaded a private album of photos from a baby shower and she tagged someone. She got tagged as spam and she was uh, in Facebook jail for three days and unable to interact at all. I was like, what? Okay, that happens probably because you tagged a lot of the people that were in the baby shower or that the persons whose baby shower it was or the photographer claimed that those were her images and did a copyright on you. So yes, you um, that can happen, I'm sorry. So love you guys and I hope you have an amazing Friday.